a very warm welcome to all of you to another lecture on this series on simulation of communication systems using MATLAB. In the last lecture we were looking at uh, the simulation of uh, PAM systems in MATLAB and MATLAB had crashed. So, we will pick up where we left off and uh, we have generated a PAM signal and we have added noise to it. So, th the only change I have made is I put these two in separate figures. So, S are the constellation points and uh, Y are the corresponding points uh, to those constellation points. So, let me do this and I see in two separate figures that figure 1 and figure 2. So, this is close to minus 10 to 10 and uh, these are the constellation points and these are the points received at the receiver. So, you see that uh, it is more of a continuous line. So, this does not make uh, means we are not able to make out uh, what was sent from which transmitter. So, what we have done here is that we have added a uh, 0 mean unit variance noise to the transmitted symbols, but uh, let us try to reduce the variance of this noise. Let me say that the variance of this noise is just or I have reduced the variance of the noise to 10 percent or uh, I have reduced the noise variance to 0 0.1 and let us see what happens. So, when I do this, I get uh, slightly discontinuous bands. So, let us reduce the noise variance even further by another factor of 10 and see what happens. So, now we see that uh, the received symbols are neatly clustered around points. So, let me do one more thing and let me say that cut this and plot the two of these on the same plot and you see that these red or orange whichever way you perceive them points correspond to the transmitted symbols and the blue clusters or the blue points correspond to the received symbols. We see that uh, the addition of noise results in a spread of uh, or basically what happens say. So, these are the points that I transmit. So, I will add data in using a since this is already red, I will possibly use a yeah, PowerPoint is doing its stuff of crashing every time. Mm -hmm. Run task manager. So, yes, we will inspect what happens due to the addition of noise in a while. Yes. So, this was it, and I will use blue pen to or I will use the blue color to annotate this further pointer options. Let us use blue color and here. So, what happens when I add noise to this that based on the noise variance the received so S plus W or Y n equal to S n plus W n. W n is naturally a Gaussian random variable. So, I get something scattered over here. Similarly, something scattered over here, something scattered over here, this and as the noise variance increases, the points will keep on getting more and more spread out. So, let us say that I will start with 0 0.001, run this and we get very small spread and now let us increase the noise variance slightly say 0 0.01. You see that uh, it leads to a bigger spread. So, actually let us do it this way. One. So, let us start with a noise variance of 0 0.1 and we get this then we 0 0.01 we get this and 0 0 1 
you get this. So, these blue lines correspond to a noise variance of 1, the orange or the red ones correspond to a noise variance of 0 0.01 and uh, the yellow ones or the innermost corresponds to a noise variance of 0 0.001 and I will just run this once more to generate another point and the circles inside correspond to the true signals transmitted. So, what we observe is based on the transmitted noise variance, the received signal can uh, spread out and uh, naturally putting this mathematically, I can say that mathematically for L equals 1, A equals plus minus 1, Sn equals or Sn is this, Yn equals Sn plus Wn. So, now Wn say n naught, we will come to other interpretations as well, but uh, w n is 0 and n naught or uh, Gaussian random variable with 0 mean and variance n naught or y n given s n is Gaussian with mean s n and y n will also be a random variable because since uh, it contains a random symbol and noise n naught. So, let us do this and uh, this is what we are seeing here. So, let us reduce L to 1 and see what do we get. This is what we are getting. So, or rather if I use hist, hist real y, I get this, this does not make sense or since there are too few symbols. So, we get two Gaussians like this, actually make it a thousand and not hurt anyone, maybe in use ten times the symbols. this and let me use 10 times the symbols and run this and we get this or I get f y s n equals 0 or s n equals minus 1 equals n naught and not square this I get these and if I try to plot these the left plot corresponds to is centered at minus 1 and the right plot uh, is centered at 1. So, I get a bimodal Gaussian distribution or a Gaussian distribution with two modes which makes sense. Now, let us say I replace y with or I increase the noise variance copy. paste and I do this and I will hold on and we will see what happens. So, so what I will do is I will plot this. 
So, there is a histogram with so minus 1 and 1 which makes sense. Now, I will add this small variance and run this program and I see this. So, get this little Gaussian spread around this because uh, so this Gaussian spread is little because uh, without any noise or the signal transmitted is deterministic. So, I get this. So, what I can do is I can normalize this, but uh, let us not uh, waste time doing that. So, these are the relative frequencies 1500, 1500 and these are the Gaussian plots fine. I will run this again. So, this and now let us uh, increase the noise variance tenfold. What do we get? We get another Gaussian just so I need to change the color maybe yes. So, this corresponds to a noise variance of 0 0.001, this corresponds to a noise variance of 0 0.01 and uh, we will continue to do this or we will continue to improve this just what I will keep doing here is move it to the left and one and now here is the interesting part I will color this as well say so maybe make this green bright green so this. So, I will take a screenshot move it to powerpoint and that will make some explanation easier. So, if I move this to PowerPoint, if I look at this, so so these correspond to n naught equals 0 0.001, 0 0.01 and 0 0.1. Fine. Or if I do this in the reverse order it would not take much time, but uh, it will bring out one plot point that I want to talk about. So, 0 0.1 first, 0 0.01 second and 0 0.001 third fine. So, these are the plot points that we get. I will obviously dock this first is black, I will make the first one blue, the second as orange or red and the third as yellow. So, these colors are given a darker shade of blue, this blue fine. So, I will now copy this to PowerPoint. And this is the same plot just that uh, it will be easier to interpret when I look at this. So, let us interpret this again. So, this corresponds to n naught equals 0 point, this corresponds to n naught equals 0 point zero 0.01 and this corresponds to zero point 0.1, these numbers. So, now the question is that uh, what do these numbers mean? or what do we get from here? We see that when then grams or the values that I can take are well separated when it equals 0 0.01. They are still separate, but uh, they are more spread out, but still separate when now 
tend to overlap just slightly tend to overlap just slightly but uh, they still tend to overlap so now let us increase the noise variance further and see what happens so and uh, i'll increase the noise variance to 0.2 run we get another plot but now so at this plot here and in this plot this corresponds to n not equals 0 0.2 and we see that this overlap becomes fecant or so now let us try to physically interpret what does this overlap mean. So you see that these uh, regions correspond to the range of values that uh, a particular transmitted point can uh, take. So when the noise variance is particularly small say like uh, 0.001 which is 10 to power minus 3 or 10 to power minus 2 the points the received points tend to stay very close to the transmitted points or uh, if you look at a received point, so when the noise variance is very small, I can say it like this, when the noise variance is very small, then the received points, points tend to stay close to the transmitted points and once we receive a symbol can say with high confidence not doubt so um, obviously the inverse of doubt or the opposite of doubt is confidence so with high confidence that the symbol closest to the received symbol was symbol closest to the received symbol was transmitted. We can save this with a fair amount of certainty. So now when I increase the noise variance to say 0 0.1, this also I can say with a fair amount of certainty that uh, the corresponding transmitted symbol was received. But now for a very small probability or with a very small probability, it might happen that uh, this was transmitted, but the noise gets added and uh, it lands up somewhere around here or this was transmitted and noise gets added so it lands up somewhere around here. So there is still a possibility of this happening but uh, it is not a large probability as you can see but still there is a possibility of uh, this happening. So now as the noise variance increases there is a possibility that uh, or even the noise variance is the PDFs, the received symbols start, the probability density functions of the received symbols start overlapping. So since the probability density functions of the received symbols start overlapping, since start mapping now there is ambiguity since these have started overlapping now there is ambiguity ambiguity regarding to what regarding what ambiguity regarding which symbol was transmitted so in this case for example when n0 is 0 0.2 this is the ambiguous region 
these symbols might come from any of the two PDF. So, all the received symbols that lie in the marked region might have come from any of the two transmitted symbols. This might have come from any of the two transmitted symbols, be it uh, minus 1 or 1. So, then the question becomes once we receive a symbol, how to decide what was and once we receive a symbol, how do we decide what was transmitted? So, this becomes the central question that uh, once we receive a symbol, how do we decide what was transmitted? So, this becomes a very important question or the central question that uh, we will try to answer in uh, this course that how do we decide that which symbol was transmitted. But uh, before we do that, let us talk about phase shift keying as well or uh, let us talk about uh, simulating phase shift keying as well. So, we have seen phase shift keying. So, let us look at this or let us look at the phase shift keying constellation and then, so once we are done with phase shift keying and uh, possibly something called quadrature amplitude modulation, we will be in a better shape to answer the question on how do we try to detect the symbols or how do we try to decide what was transmitted. So, let us try to implement phase shift keying. So, m equals say 4 and the code book now is or the transmitted symbols now correspond to this. So, this. So, let me look at the code book first. So, I will just run this portion or the transmit this thing. Oh, yeah, sorry. This is, this has to be multiplied by 2 pi. That is why. This, I run this and I run this again. And if I look at A now, this is better. Yes. So, these are the four points. M equals 4. 4. 4. These are the four possible points. So, these are the four possible points and now the noise will also be complex valued. So, let me say that not equals this and two and I will add complex valued noise with variance and not plus 1i times this, do this. So, S if I see S comma
close this figure and so we see S lies on the 4, yeah, L I have to, M. and I will add a clear all clause and clear everything that will be. So, yeah, now I will run this. And this is not needed anymore. Run. And run so oh, this histogram needs to be removed run this multiple times unintentionally this and histogram yeah now it will run yes so these are the four points you can see these x's mark the spot and these are the four points. So, now let me do this, comment this out, plot this, plot, plot the received signal like this and hold on. Now, if I run this, there is, seems to be some problem. Oh yes, this is has to be complex valued. So I did not add that complex valued thing because of which it was this. And so let's see the noise, or let's see how the noise looks. This is how the noise looks. It's a circle, or the points corresponding to the noise lie on a circle. So now hold on and plot s comma this do this I run this and so these are the received points that we get these are the received points that we get now let us say that let us try to decrease the noise variance or let us start with the same procedure that or again let us go in decreasing order of noise let us start with 2 we get this and run this again we get this we get this and this. So, this plot now looks fancier, but uh, let us talk it. Yeah. So, now this plot looks fancier, is that I uh, will again take a screenshot and move it to PowerPoint and we will see. So, this is a two dimensional plot in terms of noise. So, let us say that these red dots actually, so transmitted signal K 
color green responds to N naught. And dark red, actually this is dark red. So yes. Zero one yellow. And in color, blue corresponds to. So again, yes, so I'll make this black. So again, as the variance this is the received symbols become more and more overlapped. This increases the received symbols become more and more overlapped. So, with a very small noise variance we can say with almost certainty that uh, the red regions are uh, very uh, high amount of certainty we can say that the red regions are close to or we receive something from the red plot we say that okay yes this was the corresponding uh, transmitted symbol for green as well we can say with a high amount of certainty that uh, this was true but uh, as we move on to yellow there are ambiguous regions for yellow transmitted symbols and obviously this is there and uh, in place of blue as well so or uh, when we receive something from the blue cluster set or when we receive a blue point it's very hard for us to say that uh, this was the transmitted symbol or this you can see and so this is called 4 psk or qpsk now just to illustrate something further or I uh, will copy this picture here and paste this here just for another experiment. So, we will repeat this experiment or we will repeat this simulation experiment, but uh, for a different number of uh, constellation points now. So, now everything else will remain the same. The only thing that we will do is instead of m equals 4, we will use m equals 8 or we will use what is known as an 8 psk. So, let us first look at an 8 psk and then decide. So, 8 psk actually see that there are 8 cluster centers or there are 8 points being transmitted each corresponding to a pi by 8 phase shift around the origin. So, now let us uh, try to repeat what we have done earlier. Say we start at a noise variance of 0 0.2. So, this we see a big cloud and uh, so we lodge it here. So, what we see is a bigger cloud of symbols and uh, we see a smaller cloud of symbols. We also note that now, so one thing that uh, you might notice is that if I quickly draw this here, so I insert another slide, I draw 4 psk, this is 4 psk and this is 8 psk. You see that these are symbols from 4 psk and 8 psk. One thing that we observe is that the symbols from PSK are closer to each other than symbols from 4 PSK. That said, now let us go back to MATLAB and see what happens. So, do this. So, a m equals 8 and n not equal 0 0.2 this happens. 
one. We get another cloud. We get another cloud. And we get a similar figure. So now we look at these two figures side by side. So these two figures side by side, this is for this is for this is for PSK. QPSK. This is, we see that the ambiguity PSK is much larger. The ambiguity in uh, 8 PSK is much larger or the symbols in 8 PSK are closer. So, the ambiguity in 8 PSK is much larger and actually here it is good to add one more experiment here. Let us say that m equals 2, I will add a third plot to this discussion to make matters worse or make things slightly more interesting which is nothing but, uh, so I will add another plot which you can argue is actually PAM not PSK. We will look at, uh, we will discuss that point in detail as well. So, I will do this for m equals 2. So, naturally for any m equals 2, you can see that uh, the phase shifts, the corresponding phase shifts will be 0 and pi and the points will be plus 1 and minus 1 which is equal to 2 PAM. So, 2 PAM or binary phase shift keying is the point where PSK phase shift keying and uh, pulse amplitude modulation meet. So, these come from a general class of constellations quadrature amplitude modulation that we will talk about in the next class. But, uh, so let us m equals 2 and again let us run it for our usual set of points 0.2. these this and this so This is for this is for m equal to 2, this is for m equals 4 and this is for m equals 8. So, we have 3 separate cases for m equal to 2, m equal to 4 and m equal to 8 and the question is that uh, which of these and uh, the question is that how do we, so how do we determine what was transmitted. That is the underlying question that we have still not answered. We will possibly answer that uh, in the next few lectures. And the second question is that or one observation is that the more the number of points in a constellation the more seems to be the equity for the same amount of noise variance. The more the number of points in the constellation, the more seems to be the ambiguity in the received signal for the same amount of noise variance because here you see that uh, for actually if you look at this 
for m equals to the blue clouds are uh, clearly distinguishable or the blue clouds are clearly separable but uh, if you look at the for m equals 4 blue clouds are overlapping and uh, the yellow clouds are more or less separable you look at m equals 8 even the yellow clouds are significantly overlapping and uh, the green clouds are separable so let me quickly do this for m equals 16 and see what happens does this pattern hold 16 close again I will rush through the plots so this is m equals 16 we get 16 points we get a cloud 0 0.1 run right. 0 1 run run and this so this is the plot for m equals 16 I'll put just paste it here and we observe that here all the clouds are more or less distinguishable here the yellow clouds are more or less distinguishable but uh, the blue cloud is no longer distinguishable easily here even the green clouds which seemed uh, very safe in all the previous cases are uh, now more or less uh, continuous and um, if we extend this to maybe m equals 32 even the red clouds get may get corrupted so there seems to be some relation between the ambiguity in the received symbol and uh, the number of points from a constellation that we are transmitting. So, we will look at uh, all of this in greater detail when we talk about quadratic amplitude modulation in the next lecture. Thank you.